Every communication message you send with to your list can only do one of two things. It's either to improve and build their loyalty or it's to make it more profitable, right? It's it. Hey, podcast listener. You're about to discover insider tips, tricks, and secrets to making more sales and converting more prospects into customers with email marketing. For more information about the Email Marketing Podcast or the Autoresponder Guy, go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast. Okay, it's John McIntyre here, the Autoresponder Guy, and it's time for episode 83 of the McMethod Marketing Podcast, where you'll discover one simple thing, how to make more, how basically how to get more customers. Let me just break it down. It is about email marketing. It is about sales funnels, but really the secret to this podcast is is getting you more customers, making them spend more money with you so you can work less and spend more time with your family or snowboarding or hey, whatever you want to do, okay, whatever that is. Today, I'll be talking to Daryl Urbanski. Now, Daryl has a thing called the seven-figure funnel formula, and it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like, okay? It's a sales funnel formula that uh, has netted, as far as I'm aware, seven figures for various clients of his, including John Asaraf, which from what I know, he's, uh, he's in, he was in The Secret, so that movie about the law of attraction, very popular movie, and uh, so this guy John was in it, and this is one of Daryl's clients who does this uh, seven-figure funnel formula stuff with. So we're going to talk about the seven-figure funnel formula today, and how, so basically how to, like I said, how to get more customers, how to set up sales funnels to close more deals. To get the show notes for this episode of the McMethod Marketing Podcast, go to the McMethod.com slash 83. Now this week's McMaster's Insight of the Week is a question that you can ask yourself. Okay. What's it going to cost me not to do this? Okay. Let me say that again. What's it going to cost? Well, I'll rephrase it. What's it going to cost you if you don't do this? Let me give you some examples. What's it going to cost you not to create a great sales funnel? What's it going to cost you not to start split testing today? What's it going to cost you to put off uh, paid traffic and paid advertising for the next year? How much money are you going to miss out on? Are you going to leave sitting on the table in broad daylight by not hiring a paid traffic guy to do your paid traffic so you can get more customers like that. Okay, instead of saying, well, what's it going to cost me to go and do this paid traffic stuff? Or what's it going to cost me to go and do this split testing stuff? Start thinking about what's it going to cost you not to do it. Okay, now this advice was given to me by a very successful man that I had a dinner with a couple weeks back here in Thailand. And uh, a fascinating guy, actually. But this is just one of the questions that he said, look, this is an amazing thing you can ask yourself. Most people think about the cost of doing something. He, he said... He thinks about the cost of not doing something. This guy is much more successful than any internet marketer that I'm aware of. Okay, so that's this week's McMaster's Inside of the Week. If you want more insights like this on how to get more customers and how to just kick ass at business and life, you should join McMaster's. McMaster's, it's a private community, private forum that I have set up. There is uh, products in there on email marketing, but also just on sales funnels, landing pages, how to get more customers, copywriting, all that sort of stuff, okay? Just business and marketing stuff. And that's available to you. If you want to learn more about McMaster's, go to themcmethod.com slash McMaster's. You can learn all about it there, and I'll see you inside the forum. Now, one last thing before we get into this seven-figure funnel formula is a nice little review from a gentleman named Hugo S. Moreno. I hope I said that right. Here it is. Five stars, dot, 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 with email marketing. Hugo says, I love the podcast. The information is jam-packed with knowledge you get only if you actually hired some of these guys. Keep up the good work. P.S. Cool radio voice. P.P.S. You owe me a beer. So... <laughs> Thanks for the review, man. And uh, I'll totally buy you a beer. But, you know, remind me when we bump into each other one day at a bar or a conference or something like that. I'll come, come hang out in Thailand. I will buy you several beers if you like. And uh, you're absolutely right with these podcasts. One of the great things about doing a podcast, if you're listening and you're worrying about this, it's a great way to get free advice. Because when I email some of these guys, it could be John Carlton or Perry Marshall, if I said, hey, can we just jump on the phone for half an hour and talk about my business? They'd be like, well, yeah, here's a consulting link. Give me a 10 grand. But if, if I say, hey, I've got a podcast, gets a whole bunch of listeners, and uh, you know, would you like to come on the show? We can talk about marketing. And he's like, well, that sounds pretty good, John. That sounds like a good idea. So we get on and we talk about it. And really, I just find the questions based on my own business because the challenges that I'm going through are what most of other people are going through so it's a win-win okay so if, if you want to get some free advice you can listen to podcasts like this or another way to do it is to go start a podcast that's what's great about podcasting anyway that's it for now that's it for the reviews let's get into this interview with daryl urbanski and learn about the seven figure funnel formula uh, it's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy. I'm here with Daryl Urbanski. He is the best business coach in Canada, you know, I believe. Bestbusinesscoach.ca is his website. He helps people 
automates and scales a business to achieve multiple seven-figure sales uh, and grows their presence, grows their audience, all that sort of stuff. He has a product called Seven Figure Funnel Formula, which we're actually going to dive into today and talk about some of the funnels that he's been building, the results they're getting, and uh, the process that he follows to get these results. So you can walk away today with a, a bit of an action plan on, on how to build your uh, sales funnel. So we'll get into that in just a minute. Daryl, how are you going today? Hey, I'm doing good, John. Doing good. Glad to be here. How good are you to doing? Have you on the show, man? And we actually—it's funny because we were both at Titans, the Titans of Direct Response Conference, a couple of weeks back. But uh, we didn't even meet at the conference. It was funny when I got your email. I think from I know it was your I think it was your assistant to book in the podcast, yeah. and then I saw you floating around on Facebook in the Titans group. I was like, ah, oh, well, this is like a small world. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is a small world, especially I guess up at the at this echelon. So mm. people are really living and breathing it. So mm. that event was so awesome. Caliber of people that were there that was that was probably my favorite thing was just the quality of the people in the room. Well, you were just telling so. me about uh, like Ken McCarthy and and like that we're gonna get some of the other guys that you know some of the other gurus in the industry. Well, the the, the, the probably the more well known gurus in the internet industry to uh, to the conference, and then they ended up getting Ken McCarthy who what you were saying is he was really he's really the guru behind the gurus the guy that all the gurus that everyone knows go to but uh, no one knows who he is well, most people don't know who he is well yeah because he he's kind of been out of the game I mean he was the first one he's the godfather of internet marketing he put on the first internet marketing seminar where he had Mark whatever his name was that created Napster which is huge like the first internet browser this is back in the day when everyone was doing direct mail Ken was one of the first people to take that online and, and I, I, yeah almost all the big names they've all come through his camp in some way shape or form but um yeah, I don't know. Everyone just wants to keep credit for their success for themselves. That's something that I, I know. That's something I've actually really noticed. It's surprising because for me, it just makes sense that you pay homage to your mentors. But it's something that I haven't really seen a lot of in some respects. But yeah, I mean, it's Isaac Newton. If I've seen further than others, it's because I stood on the shoulders of giants. And that's why you and I were both at that Titans event, right? Because we exactly recognize right. that. So. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, before we get into this uh, seven-figure funnel formula, can you give the, uh, the listener just sort of a bit of a background on, uh, on who you are? Because I just met you, really, and uh, but who you are, what you do, and uh, and then we'll dive into the content. Sure, sure, sure. Well, yeah. So Daryl, Canadian boy. Um, I guess to to start off, I mean, I, I've been trying to succeed in business since I was 17, just fumbling and figuring it out. Canada is not as entrepreneurial as the states. We kind of walk the middle path between socialism and capitalism. Didn't have a lot of uh, peers or mentors that really could help me along the way, but I've had a lot of different types of success and failures, and tried every different model. And then when I Really, really, uh, I had one failure back in 2006, I think, with a, just a vending machine business. And it was the only reason was I just didn't, couldn't afford the equipment that I needed to, to, to really do it the way it needed to be done. And I realized that I was spending all this money investing in the product when I hadn't generated any sales. And that was like the, when the light bulb went off. And I realized that marketing, you know, one of my mentors said this, marketing can sell a non-existent product. Good marketing can sell a non-existent product, but bad marketing can't sell free gold. And so I just made a commitment to myself that I would really master this marketing and it just it's it's changed. Everything's changed and it's been exponential growth ever since. So most recently part of how I got to do in the seven figure funnel formula was working as a senior marketing director for John Asraf, where I helped build my third automated funnel. The previous ones all did under 10 grand a month, but they were still automated, hands free, just sales coming in. And then with John, I figured out kind of the missing pieces that I had. And last year we did what well, we did a launch and that was about 600,000. And then we did around another 80,000, 90,000 for the end of the year. We had some tech issues. And then by the end of the first quarter this year, we did about $1.4 million of that one campaign. It only really required two staff, three staff, if you consider the customer service rep. And then now, since I've left the company, um, they've done well over three and a half and I'm working with a handful of other clients and we're just duplicating the process. And so there's more people that want to work with me than I can handle. And so that's why I have this course to just help people and get a product so now I, you know I've got my own uh, my own income source that's not from me delivering services and uh, and then at the same time I actually have plans on the back end of that to take people who have been through the course and do a certification program and then that's just kind of where the vision is for that so yeah nice man you got a lot of stuff going on yeah 
well, it's just about the journey. Just having <laughs> we. I mean, you're talking about that. One of your big takeaways was just people that have a mission and motivation and reason to get up. And I, you know, I set a goal that I want to help create 200 new multimillionaire business owners who solve world problems with entrepreneurship. Mm. And that's a real goal. That's a three to five year goal that I have. So that means I need to get my course into the hands of at least a thousand people. Uh, you know, because I mean, and and not just into their hands, but I need to make sure that they go through it, that they really learn it, that they master it. And it just, you know, if we're talking about real percentages if people that implement probably need to get something more like five to ten thousand people through the course just to to get the percentage of people that will you know go through it and implement it and get the full results the full benefits you hope everyone will that goes to your course right mm. but uh some people they don't you know they're not the money might not be the goal it might be lifestyle it might be freedom so they might not want to use it to to become a millionaire they might just want to use it to i don't know, be like some people i know that just you know want to make some money and go live their life in thailand um <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny thing about Thailand, man, is you've got, on the one hand, you've got guys who are out here hustling hard and they're really trying, like they're here to build a business, to lower the cost and build a really big business and then they can go and, you know, crush the world, dominate. And then you've got other guys out here who want to make two grand a month or even a grand a month and go live on the beach for the next five years. So exactly, it's, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting split. And, and they're both right. Like, they're really both right. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, all the pieces go back in the box, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, you can't take it with you. Yeah, that's it. So it doesn't matter. You, you do whatever you want here. But at the end of the day, it's just about doing stuff that fulfills you. And that's why I want to help entrepreneurs who want to change the world or solve world problems because marketing can be used for good and for evil. And I just don't have it in my heart. Like even if, even if I had, even if I lacked an ethical bone in my body, it just would make, it makes sense. Like that's my tagline. Your success is my success. Because even if I lacked an ethical bone in my body, it just makes financial sense that if you help more people and they actually get benefits and results that it will pay you forward. They'll refer people to you. That you know they'll come back by again. Like it just. That's you one know, of the funny so. things about it is like you can. I mean, you could be a completely unethical you know person, but like in business, you'd have, you'd be like a one hit wonder. You'll get you know, you'll work <laughs> once, and as soon as yep. everyone knows what you like, they're at you know, they're gone. So you could take ethics just out of it completely, and you still have to play by the rules. Like you still have to play as though you are an ethical person. This sounds a little bit sinister now, but you still have to, like, yeah, like you said, it's just good business sense to do it. Regardless yeah. of whether you agree or believe or you're the most ethical or moral person in the world, it just makes good business sense. Yeah, and it's really kind of disheartening when you see good marketers that sell empty boxes or do, you know, just, I don't know, they just try to suck money out of people and places and then kind of disappear. Or, it's just, I don't know, it's just a it's different different type of person, I guess. Well, cool, man. Well, let's talk about this uh, seven-figure funnel formula, what's getting you all these results. Let's, uh, let's start with like a big picture overview of uh, sort of sure. what is it and how does it work and what's the sort of thinking behind it. And then we can dive into some of the... Um, the concepts or the, the nitty gritty stuff. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, and I, I'm, uh, you know, full transparency here. I'll, I'll give away as much content as I can in the time we have. So, I mean, one of the most revolutionary things that happened in marketing was the, the creation of a sales letter. So, you know, the way this all kind of developed, I mean, back in the day, what a business was, was a guy, a sales rep essentially with a horse and buggy, just going from town to town trying to sell his stuff. And he would just end up knocking on doors and talking to the, you know, the mother and father of the house and making his pitch and moving to the next door. And one day, this really ambitious sales rep he, he's trying to figure out how do I get to more doors my wife you know she wants to have more kids we all want to take her on vacations I got to find a way to get to more doors in a day and he realizes every time he goes to a door he kind of goes through the same spiel if he's never seen them before and he thinks maybe I can just take what I usually say and write it down and I can pay a boy to run ahead of me and deliver the letter and then when I show up I can just kind of summarize and answer the questions and mm -hmm. he starts doing that but he realizes that some of the boys are coming back with money already and then he gets wild and you know, after we're talking to people at doors, he starts refining the letter, adds an order form, and now all he's doing is pulling into town and taking the sales letter and having boys distribute it, and then they come back with their money and he gives them the product, and that's his little delivery system. And then once the mail system really got up and running, he didn't even need that. He could just set up a remote office in Delaware or some remote island and just do it through the mail. And so that's like the history of direct response marketing anyways, and that's how a lot of it evolved. And so it's the same sort of concept. The, the sales letter was a canned and cloned sales presentation and so it wouldn't convert as well as a face-to-face -face 
presentation. If I get someone sitting in front of me one-on-one face-to-face, I'm much more likely to, to sell them, right? To convert them and not necessarily, but consultatively, right? Consultative selling to figure out what's preventing them from buying. But this, so the sales letter is never going to meet the conversion rate on a one per one basis. But mm-hmm. the, the difference is, is that you can scale that. You can, you can mail hundreds of thousands of letters where you can't meet that many people in a day. Right. So the, the real core of the seven figure funnel formula is creating not even just not even just like a sales letter because a sales letter is just a one step but multi step marketing campaigns multi step marketing campaigns that can and clone that process Okay, and how does it? I'm I'm always curious because there's so much. Like I've 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 got a community that I teach people, you know, about email marketing and about sales funnels and that sort of thing on my end. And, and what I've noticed is that you sort of got like I mean you probably see this as well. There's a lot of marketers out there, and everyone's kind of got their own. Everyone talks as though they have their own method, I guess, to right. doing to doing marketing or to doing a sales funnel or to doing that. But often I don't know what I've seen out there is you start to think that a lot of it's very similar. At the end of the day, it's you know about getting in front of someone and giving them some sort of pitch, and then following up and making sure you've got your uh, you know your product dialed in and that. So what sort of what what makes your seven figure funnel formula? What makes it unique? What do you think? Sure. So yeah, and you're you're right, and it's it always has been the same. So the difference with our technologies or with this course is it shows case studies and real live examples of people that we're building it for, and it's using new technology because there's there's software tools out there that allow you to do automation in a totally different way, and especially something that's been really important for me is treating people differently. Like I'm writing a book called Tribal Marketing: How to Double Your Business in 12 Months or Less, and the concept of it behind it is that you have different tribes in your business. And a lot of people, when they do email marketing, they have like a, you know, their free offer. They make they make four or five, you know, free, uh, their, whatever you want to call them, lead magnet, opt-in pages, whatever you want to call it, free report pages. Mm-hmm. And that's just to build their list, right? And then everybody opts in and they all get dropped into the same list, the same bucket list, and they get marketed to. And then, you know, there's those, was it soap opera sequences or whatever, but it's still very like robotic in the sense of once you're in, you know, on day 21, you're going to get three emails to pitch this product. And then, you're going to get four emails of content and then you're going to get three emails that pitch this product. Mm. And it's, you know what I mean? And it's a low conversion rate because it's not, one, it's not behavior based. And two, it's just, it's, you know, it's not relevant to the person that's on the other end. The other part that's different is a lot of people, they don't focus with the end in mind. I mean, part of the big difference is that there's making a funnel to make, like we said, some guys, their goal is to make a thousand dollars a month or $2,000 a month and kick it on the beach. And so they don't do any planning. And then there's other people that they want to grow this big, 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 company, but they're not like, let's just say this, let's just say you want to beat the four minute mile, Mm. right? Well, if you plan your route that you're going to run to try and beat the four minute mile through a swamp, you've got your work cut out for you. (laughs) And a lot of people do that with, with their businesses and with their marketing. And so that's kind of the stuff that we try to alleviate issues with trying to scale issues with even just, you know, great, you've got something that people want, you got a hot market, you got people that want to buy it, but there's only 10 people in the market right? Like you, it's going to have to have one hell of a back end to make your million dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So just things like that. And it's just talking about just businesses that are scalable, ways to manage that, resources, vendors, tools, technologies, tips, and then also the community that is a part of it, which I think is really important because even part of what we saw at the Titans was the value of the quality of people and being with a, like, a group of like-minded individuals. So there's just different people. There's affiliate marketers, there's all sorts of different things. And so some people will teach you a tactic on how to do affiliate marketing, how to do XYZ. But I mean, the goal is still the same. Like, like for example, I, I was telling you, I have a lot of people coming to me for work and I'm almost too busy at this point. But one of my biggest qualifying questions is I just start trying to look at the, like, how much money is like, how much potential money is there in this project? And that's even something Warren Buffett had said was one of his keys to success was the ability to say no. Because especially when he started getting a name, everybody's coming to him. And that's, and again, a lot of people did, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. But there's, they're only ever going to make $30,000 with it or do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, one thing I've noticed with, I mean, the the, the tricky thing, sorry, at um, the times of direct response and conferences like that is I think that there's so much emphasis placed on marketing tactics and strategies, like how to build a sales funnel or how to write a good sales letter and how to persuade people to do stuff. But no one talks about how to choose a market that... Mm has a huge potential for scaling that if you want to make a hundred million dollars you better you got to make sure you're in the right place like in the right market because if you're in the wrong market you're never going to make a hundred million dollars it's just not it's just never going to happen um yeah and so that applies yep. at any level like to make a million dollars that's a very different question to how to make a hundred million which is different again from how to make a billion or a hundred billion dollars and yeah. so it's sort of like I actually finding my own life that it's very it's actually quite helpful to start to think on that scale that 
before you optimize anything, before you write sales letters and build a sales funnel, you know, the biggest, most important decision you have is like, if your goal is to make $10 million, well, you need to make sure that you're in a market that has the potential to produce $10 million worth of business for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, that's something I picked up from Michael Gerber was the rule of 10,000. We're basically applied that to everything because Michael Gerber, the e-myth, it's all about systemizing your business. And when you systemize, it's about not being the focal point yourself and being able to create something that you can duplicate and replicate. And so with the rule of 10,000, suddenly, you know, if, like take you, say you wanted to just take this podcast and make it the best, biggest, baddest, best podcast ever. And you were subscribing to the e-myth philosophy. Well, you would approach and be like, all right, well, how would I handle if I had 10,000 interviews? I had to book. Mm. How would I schedule those? How would I plan that out? How would I contact those people? How would I conduct those interviews? How would I do the editing for that? How, you know, like all this sort of stuff, all of a sudden, now you're developing systems and processes where it's like, man, we're going to have this huge flood of water or whatever, of traffic, of people, of work coming through. And you got to have that, like, do you know what I mean? You have to have that built out beforehand. It has to make sense. You can't be having someone show up and just throw them in and have them figure it out. Because that's something they call that, like, uh, call it the Oprah effect. That's where I first, that's where I first, like, there's two things that happened that really made me start thinking about scale and how do you scale and models that are scalable versus not scalable. I was watching TV and there was some news thing about the Oprah effect. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And they actually, um, whenever they like feature a product or something like that, or Oprah likes something and she just wants to mention it, they actually have to be careful because they've killed businesses <laughs> because the business will just get slammed. It's like for weeks on end, the phone will ring nonstop. And that sounds like a, that sounds like a, a champagne problem. And in a lot of ways it is, but what happens happens is when the businesses don't have the infrastructure, when they don't have the ability to scale, you get all these customers and then all of a sudden, say you've got 150 customers showing up at your door and you're only really able to take care of five of them. What do those 145, other 145 do? They badmouth your business. They complain. They turn around. They say you can't, right? Like it, mm. it crushes the business. And so they're not ready. They're not prepared. So there's actually a team that goes in and helps or checks out and, and you know, tests the business, so to speak, before they mention that because the Oprah effect. And even with my Self to mention what well, you said. If, if somebody really wants to make money, it can be really, really hard. And that's, it can be good and bad if you're in a, in a tight market or a small market. But there's just realities that you have to face. Like if I want to run, it's not going to be easy to run on sand or to run through a swamp as it is to run on nice flat ground. And so that's all. And it's, you're right. There's not necessarily a ton of new stuff under the sun, but there's not a lot of people that are, well, that are just mentoring and showing the way. Right. One thing I'm curious about is something like the nitty gritty stuff of how this uh, how this funnel of yours like plays out. So walk me through like a typical funnel. Sure. Well, of course, in every funnel, you've got traffic and you've got conversion. You've got a conversion event, whether it's your sales letter or whether it's a webinar or it's whatever it is, right? That's your sales. That's your sales event. Whether you're doing a free event and then you get people there and you're selling them in person, so you've got your traffic and your conversion, and that is a basic fundamental for. If I get 100 people, my conversion is 10 percent. I got right. I got 10 sales. That's great. So first thing you do is when you know you've got a hot buyers list and you've got a product and a service or something that you know is built and able to scale, then you need to build your promotion and you need to just do the math. So what I mean by that is you can't, if it costs you $15 to get a customer, but you're only selling a $10 product, you're going to dig yourself into the hole really, really fast. So now if you, instead of having one conversion event, you have two conversion events, even though only a smaller percentage will take the second purchase, now you're going to make $16. Per, right like mm -hmm. now you're making you're selling a sixteen dollar item and it's costing you fifteen dollars to get them. We have a dollar profit. Now you need to be able to roll that out. Even though you're only making a dollar, even if you're only making two dollars, even if you're only making three dollars, as long as you've got your numbers locked in and you know it really really well, you can start to roll that out. And so then you roll it out and say so you you got a you had a hundred visitors. Now you get a, a, a couple hundred visitors. Then you check your numbers. Then you get a couple thousand visitors and you check your numbers. And you need to be making sure that you're optimizing and constantly scaling and that you're already poised and ready to set up more of your back end and your upsells. And you have to build up the business in the beginning to where the math that just makes sense. Like you want your math to be so lock solid that when you go through it, it's not, it's not an if, it's just a when. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the best situation is like with, again, with John and actually with a client right now, they're spending $6 and 87 cents to get a lead, but they're making 1240 something off of them. So they're doubling their money. And when you have a situation like that, where you're putting a dollar in and you're getting $2 back, how much money do you put in the machine? Every <laughs> freaking penny, every freaking penny you can. Right. 
So, and then there's, and then there, you'll have issues with technology, things breaking along the way, and people often get frustrated and turn back. But essentially, if I were to break this down to a really, really boiled down concept, it's having a pop market, having a product that you can scale, and then having a funnel that converts and running traffic through it at a profit and, and knowing where or how to scale it out. So if you're only making a hundred, uh, one dollar, for every person that goes to your funnel, but you know for sure that you're without a doubt that that's the one dollar I'm making, then you need to get a hundred thousand people through that funnel, and you will make a hundred thousand dollars. But then what happens? This is again, this is it. What starts to happen is when people get around thirty thousand or fifty thousand, suddenly they're they're not built to scale, and their overhead gets jumped up, or the technology starts to fail. Or right, or then they're having regulation issues because of what they're they're making too much money too fast. Their merchant accounts are shutting down, all sorts of things like that. So at a bare bone thing, it's traffic and conversion. And if one conversion event won't get you there, then you need two or three conversion events, four conversion events. But if you plan that out in advance, if you do the research in advance, mm. then it's just a really safe way to, to 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 do it and then to roll out and scale. Okay. And so what do so let's say you set up a funnel. Is every funnel does it follow the same format in the sense that you got cold traffic going to an opt in page and then goes to say like a, an offer on the thank you page and then we say two upsells and then you have twenty seven emails sent out, you know, with a certain like if then logic sequence. Do you have a certain formula that you follow like that or does it vary and do you you know, do you just sort of vary it up depending on who you're working with? Well and that that also depends on the market. So for example, I have a client that's in aromatherapy and she you know, I'm not gonna say their name, but she's gone through a couple of recent internet marketers funnels because she's an online she's an online business and she's you know trying to improve herself and she just said she just felt that it was really just left a bad taste in her mouth having those upsells and downsells that like being kind of pushed upon her Mm. and she knows her market very 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 well she's been doing it for like 15 20 years so for her we're doing it like you, you can do that that's fine but it just depends on the market. That's the small answer. So there isn't a whole lot under the sun. It's like you said, it's about making, putting offers in front of prospects, right? And every list you're either doing, you can only do, every communication message you send with to your list can only do one of two things. It's either to improve and build their loyalty or it's to make them more profitable, right? It's it. You're either building loyalty or you're building their profitability, right? Yeah. And that can even be you're building the relationship or you're solving their problems. That's another way to look at it. But so that's, I mean, that's as far like, so I like that. I like, your, that makes it real simple where you kind of – you're either building the relationship or you're selling them something. Yeah, that's it. And then when you're selling them something, but that's why I changed it because selling isn't supposed to be hurting the relationship at all. Like that's where you almost need to get permission to sell because that's the other problem people get into when they try and scale this thing up. Sure, I got this funnel. I'm making a dollar, but then they start to scale it and they're getting so much negative feedback that it, it crushes them. They'll start having regulatory issues like hmm. that's – you know, and now you have reputation management issues and that cause problems or people saying that you're a scam or whatever or your stuff doesn't work so it's not about and, and, and you're, you're fine like I'm not in any way trying to <laughs> but it's it's that the loyalty and the solving the problems that's why I said that for a specific reason because again that's what a real business is supposed to do is solve someone's problem and if someone's not having that problem then you don't solve them and that's where you've got the if then like that becomes really important your if then decision diamonds or whatever you want to call them because if someone seems interested, then you need to ask their permission to try to sell them first. Because it's like when you start building a house, when you start building a building, if there's a small lean to it of like a degree or a half degree, that doesn't really matter if you're only going one story, two stories. But if you want to build that to be 60 stories, 70 stories, every little lean at the base, at the foundation makes a massive difference when you start getting above a certain mm-hmm. level. And so... So that's like that a, golf swing example when you kind of take yeah, like one degree difference on the golf swing doesn't make much like doesn't look like anything when you're hitting the ball but 200 300 yards down that pitch the ball's off in the you know it's in the lake or it's in the trees exactly 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 so I mean fun, a funnel is a funnel and you can have seven upsells and downsells on the front end and you can have five different webinars or five whatever sales letters and whatever you want on the back end and that's fine but it has to make logical sense it has to fit it has to make it has to be like so Say, for example, I sell pools. All right, so I just sold you a saltwater pool because you're some natural loving person and you don't want chemicals in your pool. Excellent. So now that you've got the pool, you know, or even before I like we start building the pool, we should check, hey, do you have a fence? Because it's according to the bylaws, you have to have a fence. If you don't have one, you can be fine. Oh, yeah, a fence is perfect. Okay, well, awesome. What about the patio furniture, right? Like, do you, do you want to upgrade your patio? I mean, we're putting this pool in. We're already going to be digging it up. Did you want to improve, like, the landscaping? Because we've got these trees that are $10. Like, someone's already in. That's why they say, 
like you want to get them when they're already buying because their wallet's out. It's not even just because their wallet's out. It's because they're buying to try and solve a problem. And oftentimes when people like – when I'm going out and I go to the store and I'm like going to buy some plants from my garden, I'm like, you know what? I don't know if this one plant is, is going to fill that empty space as, you know, as much as I need to. I'm going to get this, 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 this just in case. Right. But when yeah. you're on the sales side of it, you're like, oh, I should try and sell them seven different things. That guy bought 12 things, but it didn't make logical sense. So that's an important component to it as well. Bare bone fundamentals. You've got a funnel. You're paying for sure if you're running your cold traffic, any kind of funnel. You're spending, you know, three dollars and you're getting six. Scale it. If your goal is to make a thousand or three thousand, right? You just scale it. Get a thousand people through it. But do you have the longevity in there? Do you have the ability to scale? Do you have just have is it thought out from begin beginning to end? I mean, that was one of uh, Stephen Covey's the seven habits of highly effective people begin with the end in mind. Mm, okay. did, I'm sorry, I don't know if I did. I did I answer your question or did I go on like a total tangent? No, it's just good. It's interesting. This, it's end up being quite a, like a conceptual or, or high level chat because um, I, I actually thought that there would be like more. I suppose. Um, like nitty gritty. It's funny too. Like the great thing about podcasting is I can get on because some of these questions are relevant to um, the funnel that I'm, I'm, you know, sort of got running right now and how to improve it. That's why it's you know I, that's why I'm finding this so interesting. But um, I'm often I've just always been curious. Like you know, is there? That's why I asked the whole like, is there a set formula that you use with everyone, or uh, does it vary? And, and what I've gathered from I mean from this and what I've noticed with other guys like Perry Marshall and and all this is it's it's. I mean, it's just like fundamentals. Like you get some, you get some traffic and you add some conversion in the conversions, you get your sales page, an email sequence, you know, a landing page, maybe some upsells. And really you're just trying, I mean, I think it's Perry Marshall, maybe it's Jack Bourne actually. We did a podcast uh, earlier this week together. And he's got this thing called the traffic and conversion triangle, which is where you, you know, you, to, to build a business, you could bring traffic in and then you convert that traffic and make it buy stuff. So you got traffic, then conversion. And then the, step three is uh, economics, which is really make money on that traffic, make a profit. And then the profit then goes back into buying more traffic, which then you know goes into conversion, and it's this sort of circle of life that's mm -hmm. continually improving. But when you have that mindset, it's sort of like it doesn't really matter exactly what flow or what funnel or, or what formula you follow, just as long as you're bringing in traffic, you're optimizing the conversion, and you're optimizing your lifetime value of the customer. You just do that over and over again, and maybe you lose money at first, but eventually, you're making $2 for every $1 you spend. Yeah, and I mean, really, to be really honest, I don't know if losing your money is, is good to try. I know a lot of people do that, and if you've got the money to afford that, I just think that's a dangerous place to live in, and you just need to have really sound and, and solid financial backing. I very much come from the bootstrap philosophy, where uh, which now, like, there's the new, the new book that's selling the same you know, the same shit from before, but now it's called the lean startup, but it's all the same thing. It's about having a concept, collecting the money in advance. I mean, gyms used to do this all the time when they would start building out a new gym or a fitness center, they would get a trailer and they'd set up in front of the building with all these signs up saying how it's coming soon. And they would sell memberships at a discount. And you know, what's really funny is if they weren't selling any memberships, guess what? Construction stopped. And then they just went and did something else mm -hmm. because instead of investing all this money and building it and being like, well, now that it's built, we're going to make all these sales. No, there's still enough people that will buy early on. So I would just caution you about that. But I mean, it's it's just like cooking. If you were to take cooking, when you're starting out, you need recipes to follow, and you need to learn how to how to use a crock pot, how to like not burn everything. You have to learn a lot of these tools and techniques, and that's where a lot of people are selling. Like you're saying, people are selling a lot of courses on tactical stuff. They're trying to teach you how to be in the kitchen without blowing yourself up, and then you start with some recipes, and that's where you get people that are selling really like core, for, like this step, this step, that step, right? Yeah. But then once once you've been cooking long enough and you've got enough experience, well versed, you can make your own recipes and make it happen. And it's, you know, Dan Kennedy said this a long time ago, like the principles never change, the strategies sometimes change, and the tactics frequently change. And if you're playing at the tactical level, I mean, Facebook advertising changes every morning. <laughs> you know, when you, log, when you log into your dash, you're like, what's what's new today? What? Where'd they move that button? Yep. You know, and so when you're at the tactical level, you, you know, it's a grind to keep up. And you're also more at more risk to be automated to be made redundant to be replaced by technology or services or some sort of innovation yeah so yeah i mean it's just we just said that before i mean at the titans event we really learned that it's about solid implementation of the fundamentals and having access to people who can help you who've already been where you want to go because they can give you the answers you need when you need them and that comes from a theory i have about learning sorry if i'm rambling on and on <laughs> go but that on comes man from, this is good but that comes from a theory i have about learning so you know i never went to university i was accepted the the queen's uh, school of Commerce, but I never went. I went to Japan instead. And 
I feel part of what's helped me be so effective in my learning is that one, there was a drive of, hey, if I didn't go to school, I better keep up with them. So it actually made me very, very studious. But the other flip side is that everything I'm learning, I'm applying it as I'm going. So when you're lost and you're trying to get somewhere and you're like, hey, how do I get to X? And someone goes, oh, you just go straight down the road. You take the third right and it's the first building on your left. Do you need to rehearse that seven times? Do you need to get cue cards out? Do you need to try to like bang it into your head? No, it's like an empty puzzle piece that just clicks in and then you just go and you do it. And, you know, maybe you need to like, you know, you need to write it down just because if you get distracted, you might lose it in your short term memory. But generally speaking, you don't really need to go through the rigor that you have to do for school. And a lot of people always say, oh, now that I passed that test, I can forget everything. I just spent all this time studying. And to me, that's just a massive waste of time. And I, mm. I hate stuff like that. So I'm very much about like learning as I'm going, but then making sure I'm connected to people who have been where I want to be. That way, if I'm too focused on the next step or the next three steps and I don't see the the cliff I'm about to go off of, I've got people that will go, yo, you, you might want to go in that direction instead. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, cool. Well, this has, been, this has been fantastic, man. We're right on time, though. So before we go, can you give the, uh, you know, wh- where should someone go if they want to learn more about uh, the, the seven-figure funnel formula? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we've got a webinar on it and they can go to bestbusinesscoach.ca. There'll always be a link to it there. And of course, you can find me on Facebook or any of the social media sites. Look me up, reach me. I'm just another person. So just like you. But yeah, bestbusinesscoach.ca and LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Cool, cool. All of those links in the show notes at uh, connected.com. Daryl, thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey everybody, thanks for listening. If you want to discover more insider tips, tricks, and secrets about driving sales with email marketing, sign up for daily email tips from the autoresponder guy. Go to dropdeadcopy.com slash podcast, sign up, confirm your email address, and I'll send you daily emails on how to improve your email marketing and make more sales via email. You'll find out why open rates don't matter and the seven-letter word that underlies all effective marketing and much more.